wearing number 11. He's going to get the pitch right hand side, and he's into the end zone for a Chippewa touchdown. That was too easy as Jare cashes in. What a great opening drive for the Chippewa. It was a frustrating night on Friday in Oxford as Central Michigan fell to Miami 37 to 17. We'll take a peek at the game coming up next on Chippewa Rewind. Welcome into Chippewa Rewind. I'm Adam Jackson. This is your head coach, John Bonamigo. A tough loss for Central Michigan in Miami on Friday night. What did you think of your team's performance, coach? I thought the first half we played pretty good football with the exception of one turnover. Uh, I thought, you know, we, we hung in there. Uh, second half was a different story. Uh, didn't feel like we had the ball at all in the second half. We hurt ourselves, obviously, with some penalties. Those are things that, you know, keep popping up and... and we have to get them corrected. It's got to be addressed. But I uh, thought the players played hard. Uh, we just didn't play well enough to win. We didn't execute uh, some of the fundamentals. Hats off to Miami, especially their quarterback, guy that we knew was going to uh, be a tough guy to stop. He just you know, seemed to make the plays when they needed him and didn't make any negative plays. They didn't turn the ball over. We did. Um, you know, they stopped us on downs a couple times and, and we weren't able to get them off the field. And, you know, ultimately that's the difference in the ball game. Your defense has been so good all year long and they struggled on Friday. Did, was it something Miami did with their quarterback or did you guys just kind of have an off day? I think in any efficient offense, I think the quarterback play is always going to be a big factor in that. We gave up some, some leaky yards on, on – uh, on defense on some of the runs. Uh, we gave up some big plays, which we, we can't do. And, you know, he d did a really good job of extending plays and then finding open receivers downfield. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, th they were a difficult uh, system to, to defend, but we just have to do a better job. Well, we start with this one. The Chippewas get the football first and a great opening drive for your team. And Here's Corey Willis going up the field for 17 yards. Yeah, it was important for us to get the ball and start fast, which I thought we did. I mean, this is a nice job here of just a simple out cut. And uh, Corey does a great job of making the first man miss and getting yards after contact. And, you know, that's what, that's what great players do. They're able to win in space and extend, extend plays. Gets you to the 47, and then the next play, Mark Chapman, he also goes for 17 yards. Yeah, it's similar, you know, similar situation. We get the, get the ball out to him quick. You know, just a short, easy throw in the flat versus a soft corner. And Mark's able to turn up and gain extra yards. And so we're moving the ball here. We're doing a, a good job against the, statistically the best defense in the conference. Important play here, a fourth and nine opportunity for you guys to get points, and you find Corey Willis once again. Yeah, this was kind of a you know a call where I had to kind of dig deep a little bit. It's a damned if you do and damned if you don't. Uh, I didn't feel like we were really in field goal range, and I felt like we were too tight to to punt it. Um, you know, ordinarily fourth and nine is not something you go for, but I think when you have Cooper Rush and you've got receivers like Ch Chapman, Conklin, and Willis. Uh, and I thought our, our O-line was doing a pretty good job of pass protection. I thought we'd have be able to dial up a play. And, you know, hats off to Cooper and Corey and the O-line there. They made me right. Corey Willis, one of his five catches for 73 yards to lead the team. And then no Devin Spaulding this week due to injury, but Ja Ray Hayes took advantage. He gets into the end zone. Yeah, Ja Ray, you know, obviously is a very physical runner. He's really good when you get him down in close here and he can get his pads going, running behind his pads there, getting north and south. There's a little crease there, not a big one, but it's all he needed to get the ball in the end zone. It's a great job by the offense. 7 0 Central Michigan after the extra point. Miami comes right back down though and they're able to get into the end zone. Yeah, they, they put together a nice drive here. Again, this is a run pass option. Uh, we missed a tackle there at the point of attack, but you know, the linebacker needs to push out underneath that and widen that route. We, we really left our safety kind of in a bad position right there. Uh, but nonetheless, they're able to execute and get on the board. Joe does block the extra point. Joe Osman, that is. So it stays Central Michigan in front, 7-6. to six. 
and then Cooper, another one of those deflected plays, and they end up getting an interception. Yeah, I mean, this is one definitely that Coop would have liked to have had back. It came off the of play action. He's got time. I think he tries to force the ball in there and conk. It gets deflected, and, and uh, you know, when balls get tipped up in the air like that, you know, that's never a good thing. So they're able to get the turnover and capitalize on that, and, you know, that was the difference in the first half. Miami does go down, they get seven. It's 13 to seven, Miami over Central Michigan, and then another third and four. And Ty Conklin, who's really excelled this season at tight end for you, makes a nice catch. Ty's done a fantastic job in every aspect of, of tight end plays. Route running, he's catching the ball, and, and as a blocker at the line of scrimmage. I think a lot of times that goes understated because you see him uh, downfield making plays, but what he does at the line of scrimmage when he's not running routes, is equally as impressive. He does a great job here catching the ball, and uh, you know we're able to keep the drive alive and the chains moving. Yeah, how many times do you see that where the timing's off on the snap, Cooper able to get it, guys in his face, still makes the big play. Well, it just kind of shows the amount of poise that he has at the quarterback position. It's just uh, another thing that he's able to do very, very well. So that's the end of the first quarter. That the final play, 13 to seven, Miami in front, and then early in the second quarter. You find Corey Willis once again. Yeah, this was a good uh, throw and catch here. Uh, Cooper standing tall in the pocket, gets hit as he's releasing the ball, uh, puts a perfectly placed pass out there to Corey, who had run a great route, got the corner turned around. And, you know, I thought he got in the end zone. They reviewed it. Uh, they spot the ball on the, on the one foot line and we end up getting it in the play later. So here is that play later. Once again, Ja Ray Hayes cleaning up your drive with a one yard touchdown run. Yeah, again, good surge coming off the ball here. Uh, lead block there by, by Bocci and, uh, and uh, Trevor Thomas. And uh, you know, Ja Ray gets behind those pads again, leans into the end zone for the touchdowns. Good job. So at that point, Central Michigan has retaken the lead 14 to 13, Chippewas in front. Again, Miami so tough to stop on Friday. They go down and get another touchdown. This was a fade ball in the, in the corner, kind of a back shoulder throw. Uh, I think that's the only spot where that ball could have been thrown and ended up with a, even a chance at uh, a completion. You know, Amari's one of the top corners in our league, uh, you know, but that receiver had him on length. That was one of the taller guys on their team uh, and that we faced all year. And, and uh, again, it was just a very ball put in a spot where it's very difficult to defend. Miami goes in front 20 to 14. The Chippewas trying to get a stop and get the football back late in that first half. One of the better defensive plays on the day, Joe Osman bursts through and gets a sack. Yeah, this is a great job here by Joey. I mean, when he gets a downhill run, uh, he beats the tackle there with the spin move, and uh, he's able to get to the quarterback for a sack. It's a great job by him and, and the rest of the defense. Team leading six sack for Joe. He also had the blocked extra point earlier in the game, and that gives your team an opportunity to go on a quick drive. And how about this field goal from Brian Evey, a 45-yarder? Well, the, the field goal caps it off, but I thought the, the drive that led to it, the two-minute drill, how we managed the clock and the timeouts, I thought that uh, that was a good job by everybody on the field. We were very efficient in moving the, pushing the ball up the field to get it in the field goal range. I was really happy for for Brian uh, to make this kick. He's really been through a lot this year. Um, he's a quality kicker, a quality young man, and so for him to be able to come through like that in that situation was really positive and encouraging, and I'm, I'm really happy for him. That 45-yarder tied a season long for Brian Evie, and it pulls your team to within three points at the break. Going into the locker room in Oxford on Friday, how were you feeling? I felt like we were in a dogfight. You know, I felt that this was going to be a back and forth game. Uh, we knew we'd have to kick off coming into the second half. It felt like it was important defensively for us to get a stop right away and, and uh, get the ball back to the offense. And, you know, unfortunately, it didn't play out that way. We'll take a look at that second half between the Chippewas and the Red Hawks when we come back on Chippewa Rewind. The game is bigger than quick hands, breakaways, or finger rolls. It's bigger than layouts, sellouts, and shooting the lights out. It's bigger than cannons, bells, and wagon wheels in any stadium, field, or school. Because when you play the game for the integrity of the sport, with character, honor, and heart, the game is bigger than just a game. It's a foundation for life.
20 to 17 Central Michigan trailing at the break and the Red Hawks get the football first and first play John they go right up the middle here and score. Yeah, it's it's disappointing. Now we you know we've had some injuries in at the linebacker position namely um, you know namely uh, Nathan Ricketts didn't finish the game but uh, we we didn't fit that properly uh, at the point of attack and then uh, we didn't get very good. It happened so quickly, you know, our secondary support didn't get good angles on the ball and, and uh, it breaks out for a touchdown. Really, that should have been a 10-yard game, game in us saying, you know, what the heck happened. But, you know, because we didn't fit it correctly uh, at the line of scrimmage and it hit so fast, so hard downhill, it kind of caught the secondary a little bit uh, off guard, and so we didn't get the proper rotation on that. It's unfortunate. Uh, the good thing is these are all what we're seeing. These are all mistakes that are very much correctable, and, and uh, I know uh, that Coach Colby and the rest of our defensive staff will, will address these things. You had just gotten the field goal before halftime to pull within three, and that happens on the first play of the third. I know you called that a back-breaking play. It, it was because now you're down by two scores. Instead of being in a one-score game, you're now in a two-score game. But not only that, you're in a two-score game where you know, no one's really stopped anybody. Made it 27-17. to 17. Miami is able to add a field goal to go in front 30-17. to 17. And you're driving here, another situation where you're – kind of in field goal range, kind of not, right on the outside edge of it, and it's a fourth and two and just weren't able to convert. Yeah, I think we had, uh, I think we had four fourth down uh, attempts uh, in that game. I think we, we converted on the first three and this one we didn't. I mean, it, again, you get in that, those stages of the game, it's late in the game, you know, you're already down uh, two scores, three scores, and you have to you have to gamble in this situation, and unfortunately, we weren't able to convert there. Miami adds another late touchdown. 37 to 17 is the final. Coach, a tough stretch. You have lost three straight. Where do you and the team go from here? Well, we have to look at uh, what we've been doing. The nice thing about having this mini buy is it gives everybody a chance to rest up and heal up, and that's really important for where we're, our team is, the physical health of our team is at this point in time. Uh, it also gives our coaches a little bit more time to really take a look at some of the things that we've been doing, uh, do a little self-analysis, some self-scout, uh, and make some evaluations on, you know, what is it, you know, what are we asking the players to do? Are they able to execute those things? Uh, and if not, then we may need to, we need be, may need to adjust some of the things that we're, that we're trying to do. I think, uh, Good coaching is figuring out what your players can do and putting them in situations where they can be consistently successful. And, and bad coaching is when you ask players to do things that they're not able to execute at a high level. And so uh, we'll take a hard look at those things. I think it's, uh, it comes at a perfect time for us. You know, you, you don't want the bye weeks when you're, when you're hot and you're really doing really well. and, and string and wing wins together you want to kind of keep playing and and i think when you've hit a little bit of a snag and you might be at a, a kind of a crossroads it's a it can be very beneficial to have the extra time coach i know a tough loss but i do want to bring in one positive just cooper rush became the second all-time leading passer in the mac just behind another chippewa dan lefevre what does it say about this program to have two of your guys up there at the top? Well, it says we've been able to move the ball. And, um, you know, I think that it, it speaks to the quality of players that we're able to attract here and uh, the ability of our coaches to develop them. Uh, I think that Cooper's a fine player. Uh, he's done a, a tremendous amount of things. Uh, you know, I also want to mention that last week he was selected as a uh, finalist for the uh, Mackey Award, so he'll be taking a trip. He'll be one of the uh, 12 finalists there. He's won at, already won an $18,000 postgraduate scholarship, so he's a National Football Foundation Scholar Athlete. Uh, the last guy that we've had, uh, you know, that won that award from, from this university was one of my former teammates, uh, Bob Stebbins, who won it as a tight end, so it's been a long time since we've had that. You know, very proud of that accomplishment from Cooper as well. Been a real long time if it was back when you were playing, That's right? exactly right. It's been 30-some years, so. Well, a, a tremendous accomplishment for Cooper Rush, and he continues to represent the Chippewas very well. Well, as Coach said, a bye week coming up, but 
Coming up next week, they'll take on the Ohio Bobcats in their final home game of the season. We'll take a look at the Bobcats when we come back. Hey CMU fans, experience Central Michigan University and all there is to do on campus by visiting Ticket Central, your one-stop shop for all your favorite CMU events. Ticket Central staff is ready to greet you with a smile and assist you with all your ticketing needs. Whether it be for athletic events, plays, concerts, and much more, we've got you covered. For further information, you can visit the atrium of the Event Center Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or give us a call at 888-347-3872. At Ticket Central, we're here to help get you wherever you want to go. Back on Chippewa Rewind, Central Michigan looking for that sixth win coming up. And the next opponent is Ohio. It won't come until next Tuesday, but they'll come into Kelly Shorts, and they've won three straight games, Coach. Uh, excellent program, excellent team. Obviously very well coached. Uh, you know, a ton of respect for Coach Solich and, and what he's done, not just at Ohio, but his entire career. Um, he's somebody that when we go to league meetings, uh, He's kind of like the E.F. Hutton, you know, when he speaks, everybody listens. Uh, I have a tremendous amount of respect and admiration for him. And, uh, you know, this will be an important game for us, you know, for where, what's on the table for us, what we're still trying to accomplish. Um, and really for our seniors, being, it, being that it's going to be their last game in, in Kelly Short Stadium. I know you took us through a little bit of what you, the coaches, will do this week. How do you handle the players with this extra time off before that well, game? Well, they changes? get some rest. You know, that's that's a, a big part of it. Um, we'll be able to watch some film with them and then kind of gradually uh, introduce the Ohio game plan. But before we even do that, we're going to take a couple of days of just fundamental days and just kind of clean up some things that... Uh, um, they need, need to be addressed in our play and, and that's kind of, you know, been our standard approach to when you have extra time. It's not game plan specific as much as it is, you know, Chippewa football specific. You know, honing in on our fundamentals and our techniques and revisiting some of, uh, you know, some of the drill work that maybe you don't have time for during the regular game prep. You know, a little bit more individual time with the coaches and just trying to you know, polish up and, and hone in on some of the fundamentals that maybe have been, you know, maybe kind of slip away at this time of year. You mentioned the seniors, they'll be honored on Tuesday night. I know this isn't a class that you recruited, but you've been with them for a couple of years. What do these seniors mean to Central Michigan's program? They're, it's a great group of leaders and a great group of young men and a great group of, uh, you know, ambassadors really, not only of Central Michigan football, but of our university. They're all uh, going to graduate on time. Uh, you know they're all in in good standing, and they're you know they're going to go on, and you know a couple of them are going to have uh, opportunities to continue their playing careers. The rest of them are going to go out and be very successful in life. All right, Coach. Well, Tuesday at home, final time this season at Kelly Shorts. Good luck to you against the Bobcats. Thanks very much to everybody that supported us. Uh, we're really looking to forward to having a great crowd here on Tuesday night in Kelly Shorts Stadium to send our seniors off in the right way. I'll be looking for you at Kelly Shorts against Ohio U. As always, fire up chips. All right, Central Michigan against Ohio. That's a 7 o'clock start on Tuesday evening against the Bobcats. You can catch it on ESPN2. He's Coach John Bonamigo. I'm Adam Jaxa. As always, have a terrific week and fire up chips.